guys welcome to my channel still under happy new year i'm still gonna say happy new year how are you guys doing thank you so much for joining i'm going this channel today so guys today i want to show you how i make goat meat stew yummy right here in this pot i have the goat meat and i have some cow skin aka pomo to go with that i have some purple onions and some green onions I'm gonna be adding a uh, white pepper. This is my ginger and garlic paste mixture and some salt and stir cube. Let me just go ahead and add the stir cube. So this is all we're gonna need to parboil the meat. That's gonna be the first step. Now, when the meat is done, then I'm gonna show you how I really make this stew. Also, while I'm parboiling the meat, I'm gonna be using fresh pepper and red bell peppers for this recipe i'm gonna be preparing that behind the camera if you don't mind but meanwhile i just wanted to show you the meats we're using and what i'm seasoning with like i said green onion purple onion stock white pepper ginger and garlic paste salt and that's it just keep it simple okay so let's go so i'm just gonna make sure if you have ginger and garlic paste your homemade one always use a dry a spoon i'm almost out of it though that gives the, the whole thing. You can leave that out if you want. And then you put your salt as much as you want. And the white pepper. The white pepper is not spicy. It's just for flavor. I like to use it for my stew. Especially when goat meat is involved. I'm going to add more onions. Since I have cow skin on it. I'm going to put a lot of onions in it. Boiling it without water for now. I want the goat meat to release its juice so that the whole spice will go into the meat and then I can now add water. So just mix it up. We're going to be cooking on high. If you have a pressure cooker, feel free to use it. But I just want to be able to control my spice and everything. Alright, so for some minutes and then when the juice is released, I pour some water in there. So now at least it has reduced a little juice. I'm just go ahead and pour water. And then I add uh, to do it on the same level. You might want to have your water to be like on the same level with the meat. Because you know goat meat don't, um, especially the burnt ones, it doesn't cook too fast except you put it in a pressure cooker the other time i made it i used the goat meat from the supermarket that was kind of softer but this one is from african market so they made it look like the one we have back home so right now it's time to start boiling the goat meat it should be boiling but uh, we should boil it like uh 25 minutes or 30 minutes i should say that should be good all right so see you in 30 minutes okay now the meat should be soft enough let me see the cow skin because this is a very hard okay that's good enough because it's gonna go into the oven i'll be grilling it i like to grill it if you want to fry you can fry but i like to grill it i'll grill it before using it okay okay so now i'm gonna allow you know to drain the water from the beef before i put it in the oven just set your oven to 350 degrees that's fine you know i'm not so much in a hurry so the next step after it drains is to go right into the oven. All right guys, the um the meat is in the oven. It's almost done. I think in the next 10 minutes I should be bringing it out. Here I have my blended tomato and red bell pepper and also I have a scotch butter pepper in there. I'm going to be using a curry, onions, I have two cups of vegetable oil, I have my seasoning cube, this is a mixture of chicken and beef seasoning and I'm still going to add uh, the white pepper, a little bit of thyme, my garlic and ginger paste and of course the salt. So right now I'm drying out the pot because I washed it out. So let's cook our goat meat stew. Ok 
Okay, I'm using a lot of oil because the tomato is a lot. You can always remove it after when the stew is done. If it's too much, you can also scoop it out, okay? So into this oil, I'm going to be adding a tablespoon of curry powder. This is for flavor. It's an amazing flavor if you haven't tried it before. I'm not going to be adding onions right away because I'm using a silver uh, stainless steel pot and it's easy to burn your stew. If I was making jollof rice, I could go ahead and put onions. But because I'm not making jollof rice, I don't want my stew to burn. So I'm just going to warm up this oil and the curry a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and pour the tomato puree that I have. That sizzle. I love the sizzle sound. So I'm going to fry it a little bit and then I'm going to add the onions. The reason I did this is it's like you're confusing the pot and you're confusing the stove rather I don't know like you know it's as if you're boiling the tomato that's what the stove the pot both of them are thinking meanwhile you're frying so when you fry a little then you add the onions that will help your stew not get burnt easily and this is not a stew you walk away from guys you're gonna have to be here to stir it you know stir it often and on so it doesn't burn if you burn your stew you've totally lost the flavor and the taste of that particular stew it's not nice so now i'm gonna add the onions like i said so now the onions and the tomato and curry can fry together i'm gonna allow it to fry like um 10 minutes before i add all the spices so right now I'm going to add my ginger and garlic paste. If you don't like it, you can skip that. If you want to keep it as simple as just regular good meat, then you don't need ginger and garlic paste. But I'm going to add. Oh, it's splashing so much. And in goes the white pepper. White pepper is for flavor. I'm going to add like a, a tablespoon of uh, thyme. I love curry in goat milk, so put as much as you want or as less as you want. And of course the stock. And a little bit of salt for now because I season the goat milk with salt. It's really splashing. It's splashing because I didn't, when I was boiling the tomato, I didn't allow it to dry all the way. I didn't want it to dry all the way. Anyway, so we're going to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn. Alright guys, so right now you see the way the oil is rested on top of the sauce. Shows the tomato is kind of ready. So I'm still going to go ahead and put in the goat meat and let them fry together for another 10 minutes. I'm not going to add the cow skin because it's quite soft. I'm going to add it when I'm almost done so it doesn't just go too soft. It's already kind of way too soft so I'm just gonna fry as in frying the sauce with the goat meat so that all the sauce can go into the goat meat so when you're eating the goat meat you're biting on it you can still taste that beautiful sauce inside it all right so now guys we're gonna be adding the cow skin you see how soft it is you can leave your stew like this if you like it thick but for me, I'm going to put a, a little bit of the stock we got from boiling the goat meat to loosen it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to allow it to cook for like a 10 more minutes and we're done. When you're making stew, you have to be patient. If you want it to really come out real good, stew is not a 10 minutes or 20 minutes thing. You have to really have patience for it so that all the ingredients will marry each other, you know. This is a relationship right here. That's what I call it. Look at that beautiful color. If you want your stew to be like popping red like this, always add um, red bell pepper or tatashe to your tomatoes. And then you get this lovely color. So 10 more minutes and I'm done. All right. We're good to go. We are good to go. Just give it a last quick stir. Look at that beautiful. 
so good. Now you turn off the stuff and you get your container and transfer it immediately to me. So I make my goat meat stew. Go ahead and make yours. Let me know how it tastes. How do you make yours? I have three ways I make mine. This is one of the ways. Thank you for joining me today. It's nice having you in my kitchen. Bye from Ogomwadi. Stay safe, keep cooking, and stay blessed. Bye!